I went to Carl G. Mazur School. That is, George and I used to take turns in going. George would go one day and I would go the next. The days that George would go, I would work and then he would work the days that I went. And so we held down the job and went to school too. Joseph Openshaw Thirty-four-year-old Apostle George A. Smith was appointed to lead a group of saints to colonize Iron County. An experienced teacher, he immediately set up a makeshift classroom near Cedar City and commenced instruction. Monday, March 3rd, 1851. My wiki-up is a very important establishment composed of brush, a few slabs, and three wagons, a fire in the center, and a lot of milking stools, benches and logs placed around. It answers for various purposes, kitchen, schoolhouse, dining room, meeting house, council house, sitting room, reading room, storeroom. To see my school some of the cold nights in February, scholars standing round my huge campfire, the wind broken off by the brush and the whole canopy of heaven for covering, thermometer standing at seven degrees, I would stand with my grammar book, the only one in school, would give out a sentence at a time and pass it around. Notwithstanding these circumstances, I never saw a grammar class learn faster for the time. George A. Smith. Although Christopher Alston faced difficulty securing his education in Sugar House, Utah, he was undeterred by financial problems. I would go to the canyon with a yoke of oxen to take out logs to sell for fuel, to help make a living for my mother and fatherless brothers and sisters, I being the eldest of the five living children. I attended school at night and my professor gave me special permission to come in late when I did not get home from the canyon in time for the opening classwork. Christopher Alston. The 1st of September, 1866. We went back to Wallsburg to harvest our crops. We had a good crop and plenty of deer, wild chickens, and rabbits to eat that winter. I did not like to see the children running around with nothing to do, so I told the children to come to our home. We had two rooms and could hold school. I was the first school teacher in Wallsburg. We had no schoolhouse or place to hold meetings, so we held all of the meetings in our home. The second week of school, Alma Kirby brought a peck of wheat and wanted to enter school. I told him that I did not want the wheat, that he was welcome to come to school. Lucina Meacham Boren It is true that I had more to contend with than I anticipated. The children, from rude habits acquired on the road to the valley and the few educational privileges they have enjoyed were at first a little unmanageable. The mild measures I originally adopted were forced to be changed for those a little more peremptory. And then with the cooperation of their parents, my rule was established and these difficulties ceased. John Hudson. Trained as a kindergarten teacher in New York, Camilla Cobb was asked to teach Brigham Young's children in the family schoolhouse. Before immigrating to the United States, she had been tutored by Carl G. Mazur in her native Germany. Seymour B. Young remembered Aunt Camilla with fondness. She possessed a wonderful spirituality and imparted to her pupils this rare gift of faith in God. She simply had a way of her own and when you left the school at night, you simply wanted to be upright in all your walks. For that is what she inspired in her pupils, together with an absolute faith in God. One day, Camilla threatened to expel a student because of his misbehavior. 
The boy asked, Auntie, can't you forgive me? She answered that no, she couldn't. She had repeatedly warned him. The boy responded, But you taught us the Savior forgave seventy times seven, and you haven't forgiven me half that. You are right, she said, and took him into her arms. She learned a lesson that she never forgot and said, I never lost my temper again in a schoolroom. Seymour B. Young